All right, looks like it's just me today, and that's fine. Use this session to talk a little bit about the Blazor dashboard progress and look at the different details and yeah, see how far we get with that. So let's take a look. So since last week, I've made I've been just primarily working on the dashboard, which is renamed to Elsa Studio. And just to recap, it's a re-implementation of the Elsa dashboard using Blazor and specifically using the Mud Blazor uh, component library. It's uh, significantly sped up the implementation, as you'll see. So let's let's take a quick look. So let me first clear my cookies and start from the login screen. So there's a, uh, an actual login screen that is connected to the backend. So like the um, Stencil implementation, it, it's connected to the same backend. So now we have basically two clients, one built using Stencil and the other one using Blazor. So let's yeah, let's take a look at the login screen first. So the first thing you'll notice it it, because it uses Mudblazer, it has validation uh, UI built in, which is pretty nice. <clears throat> I'm not sure what this is about. That looks like a, a bug I recently introduced. Let's see what this is. Ah, okay, I didn't catch the the fact that it could be null when uh, submitting without value. So let me see if I can change it just quickly like this. Of course, I should probably implement some validation server side without even trying to validate the credentials. All right, let's try this again. And this time I'll just enter at least some some value. And then when I log in, we'll, uh, we'll see the use of the Mudblazer. I think it's called Snack Bar. So that's, that's uh, a UI component right there. Now let's try logging in with a real username and password. And now we're logged into the, uh, the backend or the the dashboard. Let's see some of the changes since last week is we now have an environment picker. So that's a new concept in Elsa Studio uh, where you can connect your, your studio to uh, a configured environment. So this could be staging or your local machine. Local will, it means it points to the local server I've running here in ASP.NET Core. Specifically, that's the Elsa workflow server web bundle which is just the Elsa server. It doesn't host the dashboard like the all-in-one, which hosts uh, the backend server as well as the, the stencil component. So here we're connected to that. And when I change this, it's not currently implemented. It's a UI thing only. But the idea is to, when you switch, that every time you, a new request is made, so for example, if you go to definitions, it loads the definitions from this environment. So here we see the list of definitions, and this is actually implemented. So this is actually fetched from the, the backend, and we can click on it. And then we see in a, the current state of the, the workflow designer, which is in structure, it's similar to what we have here. If we log in here, and we go to the workflow designer here. We have the activity picker on the left, which we have here as well. So we have the categories as you can see it's not implemented it's not bound against the actual activities that's that's yet to be done but here we're using the this i think it's called the stack panel or collapsible i don't recall but it's a component of mod blazer and here we have it too but implemented manually in stencil and of course we have the properties here on the right hand side variables settings input output all of these things remain to be implemented. And this is uh, just an initial work in progress. Another thing I've noticed uh, is these resizable, the, these resize handles, these panes, which you can collapse and expand. And what's, what's cool about this is that I didn't have to implement this myself. And this is not a component from Mudblazer, but from, let me remind myself, I think a uh, Radsan, is that it? Radsan, yes. So Radsan is uh, also, Blazor component library. It's open source, it's MIT, and they have a whole host of uh, components. And for now, I'm only using this splitter, but maybe there will be other useful components as well to be used. And at the bottom, we have the activity input editor. So here we'll be able to have a list of inputs, input controls to edit the settings of, of an activity, the outputs, uh, some common settings like ID and display name, and maybe some advanced settings. So I think that's pretty much it for now for the, actually, no, there's one more thing. There's a, a tabbed UI here. So the idea is that we can open multiple workflow definitions without having to do things like here. So here in the stencil designer, if you want to edit another 
definition, you have to go to the browser and then let's say we have another one. And then let's say we, maybe this is like a sub workflow. Maybe we'll have a sub workflow. And now imagine we made some changes. Uh, let's ignore this one. And then now we want to actually use this sub workflow, right? So we go back to the other one. There's a little bug in the uh, designer currently where I have to re refresh the entire screen in order to see the sub workflow appear in the picker. That's why I did a refresh, but now I can use this. But imagine now I want to be able to edit the implementation. I would have to go back to the sub workflow, right? So you get the idea. That's quite annoying. So that's that's going to be fixed with these these tabs. So I can quickly switch between different workflows. Currently, there's a little bug if I click if I switch too quickly, it's not going to keep up and then some JS interrupt error occurs. So uh, that needs to be fixed. Uh, I noticed that the sub workflow appears here as well. So it's, uh, it's as I mentioned, it's connected to the backend. Yeah, so that's these things. Not yet sure how to open an existing or create a new workflow by clicking the plus tab. One idea is to have a component here that's similar to the definitions uh, table that we see here so that you can quickly open and insert so it's going to be a reusable component as you can imagine there will be filters here to quickly open and or find and open the workflow you want to open in the editor and, and it should be an option like this one create new workflow if you want to create a new workflow yeah also i'm taking this opportunity to use version i think version 2 of x6 is newer than the 1.3 version used in uh, the stencil implementation so taking advantage of that and while doing the re-implementation, I'm also going to experiment with features that are provided by X6, like the, this sort of tooling where you can tweak the connections, for example. And there's also an option to allow you to resize these activities. So I'm probably going to do some experiments with that so that you have more control over the, the look and feel of your, your workflow, but also things like annotations, little post-its that you might want to add to your activities in order to to make it more descriptive yeah so i mentioned these environments and here will be a button that allows allows you to deploy this workflow let's say i'm on the local environment i'm editing my local workflow and now maybe i want to deploy it to the, the staging environment so maybe there should be a button here that allows you to select the environment to deploy to alternatively we could imagine maybe a separate deployment uh, section on in the in the left hand uh, menu from where you can have all sorts of control of what to deploy where. Very similar to Orchard Core, which also has a separate deployments section, allowing you to deploy content to a different server. So might be interesting to take a look at that. All right, and what else? So there's a little alignment UI helper that, that's new. The connections themselves, I think, are a little bit better. They, they have better corners, if you will. If you compare that to this implementation, and of course this is nothing to do with Blazor, it's it's however you configure X6, but think in, on the cert, in certain scenarios the the curves are not as nice, I think. So for example here, I don't know, it's it's not too different, but I, I for some reason I think it it seems a little bit better. Of course, a uh, big difference is that these these uh, ports they they shift location as you move around the thing and that's yet to be implemented yeah, it's funny i thought i thought this looked better but now that i look again at, at the way the curves go it's not that different anyway moving on this of course um is the activity path which we also have here that's that's this implementation the the tool buttons here outer layout and zoom to fit now look like this so we have zoom to content uh, zoom content to fit the screen and outer layout and maybe this will be a drop down menu so you can choose the direction of course a very important aspect of this blazer implementation is the extensibility so what you can see on the left hand side is a few stubbed modules so there's a security uh, module that allows you to will allow you to manage users and roles of course we could do it as well in this um, stencil component but a big reason to um, to spend more time on the on the Blazor implementation is is because it's easier for developers to extend with their own implementations, their own modules, and and um, because of Mud Blazor, which implements Material des Design, it's so much easier to to use the existing components and uh, and just focus on on actual functionality versus uh, having to do things in Stencil. 
we don't have this advantage of using these components. Uh, so that's uh, a big plus for uh, using Blazor and, and any other um, component library, of course. So if, if we were to implement it in React, we would have the same benefits. This does raise the question, how to reuse this designer in, in your own dashboard application, right? And for that, the stencil component is great because it's there, it's, it doesn't have any dependency on a UI framework other than a small dependency on stencil at runtime, but that's like a really small uh, dependency that doesn't get in the way. But then there is this limitation of, you know, the, this, this designer, it doesn't have a, a whole ecosystem of, of components that you can also reuse and extending it with custom plugins. It's possible, but it does require you to use a, a framework like React or Stencil or Angular. And it, 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 it's not very suitable for if you're if you're a .NET developer, then you will probably want to be creating modules in .NET using C Sharp for the Blazor dashboard. And that's um, that's the main reason to start this dashboard application, this dashboard project. So so initially I thought, well, when using Blazor, you can create Blazor components and wrap them in custom elements, which works. And that could be a, an avenue for other developers that have their own dashboard, which could be created in React or Angular or Vue, it doesn't matter, maybe even plain HTML and jQuery. And they would also be able to reuse the designer. But then again comes the question, what if they wanted to leverage whatever component framework they are using? For example, to implement the activity picker and the activity property editors. Here I'm using Blazor components. Even these activities are Blazor components wrapped in a custom element, which is pretty cool. So I can imagine similarly, you may want to do it in your own dashboard. So uh, the jury is still out there if, uh, in terms of what, what should be done. And because it's not quite clear this this component will remain to be supported so that you can embed it as is without with or without this toolbar in your own application but uh, yeah th this discussion is still ongoing and any thoughts any feedback is uh, very welcome all right so as you see these these modules are stopped out so it's there's no actual implementation yet there's going to be a secrets module that allows you to manage secrets which we have in LSA2 webhooks. We also have it in LSA2, but it, that's a different implementation. The webhooks module here is going to allow you to manage webhooks exposed by LSA. And in LSA2, the webhooks module is about consuming webhooks from other systems, but here potentially it's going to be both. And of course the counter module is just a, a sample module. Let's see if I forgot anything. Dark mode very important. I think I showed this last time as well. So that's pretty cool. Uh, there's just one thing. I, I still need to implement it for this design service. Right now it's a little bit bright in, or the contrast is a little bit much, I think. So maybe these design service here should be a little bit darker, probably maybe the same contrast as here. So yeah, that's the current state. I'm currently focusing on, well, making this, this look a little bit better in dark. Uh, dark mode, and then right after, I'm gonna actually start con consuming the backend APIs to, to bind the categories and activities from here, and then being able to drag and drop it onto the service. And of course, the the service being fed from the currently loaded workflow definition, and uh, and continue from there, like activity input properties. All right, so um, that's what I wanted to show. I think I'll leave it at that unless I find something else in my notes. Yeah, that's pretty much it. Thank you for watching and uh, see you next week. <laughs>